Welcome to my shop once again. On July 27th, I did my first interactive live remote demonstration. And that was for the New Jersey wood turners. And I worked on this particular piece right here. Now I've taken some of that away. I'll show you the original piece. I didn't really like it. Now I have lots of time I can finish this. So my intention is to complete this piece. It's still got the waste block on the back where I had it attached with a screw chuck uh, on different centers. I may put it back on the lathe and do a little bit of work. The first thing I'm going to do, bring it a little closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this piece. Now I plan on having this piece in this orientation. I might just put a little uh, stand down here, raise this up a couple inches. I'm going to do a little carving up here in this area right, right here. And where I have these X's, I'm going to bevel that. I'm going to take some of that wood off on my bandsaw. Then I'm going to get my Proxon carver and do a little carving here. Anyway, let's move on and uh, we'll get going with this piece. All right, now I am going to try to incorporate three different carving tools into my project. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a design here. Coming around this way, I've, I've cut this on my bandsaw and uh, taken it onto my sanding center a little bit. And I'm going to do a little bit of carving in this area. And this is the engraver. It's a rotary engraver. 10,000 to 16,000 RPM, and I'll tell you, I would not recommend getting this type of engraver. It has a long shaft, and the motor is in the unit here. So this all turns, and sometimes this comes loose, and the better ones have the motor actually in the, uh, the handheld part right here. They're a little bit more expensive, but anyway. Now, first thing I'm going to do, moving along here, I've got a, a tip in here that I'll show you a close-up of. All right, I'm showing you a few of the cutters, the, uh, the little ends that go into my carving tool. These are really cool. These uh, are my most recent purchase. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but these are offset, these little points. And what you get is sort of a, a line with three grooves in it. This little thicker one right here. This is a collet engraver. So some of these, like this one here, obviously is thinner than this one. So I need a different collet to attach that to the business end of that engraver. And I'm going to do a little bit of sample carving on this piece of maple. It's probably the same wood as my project is. So I'm going to turn this on. Now this is a variable speed machine. that. I'm going to take a little marker here and just see if I can kind of highlight this. I'm not sure how this will look. I'm going to move on to my main project here. I'm going to do a little carving right up in here. All right, let's take a look here. So there's a little pamphlet that my carver came in. I probably got that at uh, Treeline. Now as you work on something like this, it's really 
very difficult to do any planning. I usually have some ideas in mind what I want to accomplish in a piece like this. It's, you know, mainly meant to be artistic. And I apply a number of different embellishment techniques to this during this video. And there's a good chance I'll skip some of them because I don't end up with many of them. Uh, I do a little scorching and coloring and burning and uh, anyway, uh, I will periodically show you the finished piece that I end up with at the very end of this video. All right. Now I'm definitely going to get my, my creme brulee burner and just highlight that with a little bit of flame. Yeah, I think that'll be good. All right, I'm finished with my carving all the way through here. And I am going to do a little burning on this with my little torch. All right. And I'm sure this is a, I'm sure you can find these on the internet. This is a creme brulee torch and it's a little bit smaller. It takes a butane fuel, like a camp fuel. All right, let's uh, I'm going to dial that back a little bit. Make sure I get this in the in the camera. Now, as I was carving this, there were lots of little fuzzy bits, if you will. And I'm, I left them in there, I didn't sand them back or anything. They'll be burnt off. Yeah, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Now, I wasn't sure about this area right in here, but I kind of like that. It's a little bit of a you know, overflow from the carving. Yeah, that's all right. And I can always sand that off. I don't like it later. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at this right here. Yeah. I can put something in here contrasting. I could do some gold leaf. I could do some uh, metal reactive paint right in this area. Yeah. All right. Now I did a little bit more work off camera and I took my little creme brulee torch and I Continue that burn around the edge right here and a little bit on this edge and this edge. I'm going to take a brush. This is a brass brush and just kind of clean that a little bit. Um, this is hard maple, so I'm not really getting the grain that I might get on ash. There's a little bit right there that I think if I go down deep enough, I can kind of get a little bit of contrast with that grain. And maybe not. Uh, all right, so the next decision I need to make, and probably the last decision, I'm okay with the center. I've got to do something with this. I think it'll be different when I put a finish on this area right here. This is good in the center. I'm thinking this area right here, I'm either going to do metal leaf or uh, metal reactive paint. And I'm not sure. I got to turn the camera off and think about this a little bit. I think either one would be pretty cool. So, all right, I have decided to put a little bit of silver leaf in this bare area right here, maybe a little bit down there. And I think I'm going to use real silver leaf.
Okay, here's a shot of my completed piece. I've got a little bit of silver leaf in where I talked about that and some metal reactive paint as well, which I don't ordinarily do. Now, so far, I'm preparing this surface. I'm trying to make it fairly smooth and I've got one coat of my shellac mineral oil mixture on there and if you're asking what the percentage is, I don't know, 5%, let's call it, of mineral oil and that becomes a little bit of a lubricant. Um, I've done some sanding on this and I want to just uh, very, very quickly sand that back and what I'm doing in this uh, process or this part of my embellishing is I'm just creating a smooth surface right there and that actually it's pretty good now the next step I'm going to do is I'm taking some some gesso all right and this is a canvas primer if you're painting something I guess and all I'm doing here again I'm establishing a foundation and I'm going to put one or two, three coats of gesso on there, let it dry, sand it back. And I'm going to just use a foam brush, put it on there. Trying not to get into my carved and burned area over here. Now, if you're a member of the AAW, the last American Woodturner magazine had a gilding article in it, and it was by um, an old friend of mine, Barry Bryant, who is, and I'm not really making this all up, he's a world-class gilder. Um, he's been honored, he's demonstrated gilding, and I, the article really goes into great detail as far as real gilding. I call this kind of poor man's gilding or hillbilly gilding. I don't mean to insult any hillbillies out there, but uh, okay, that's not too bad. And again, I'm gonna let that dry sand it back maybe put a couple coats of it on there this is a time-consuming process it's not difficult and it's especially not difficult the way I do it now Barry Bryant and I were members of same wood turning club down in Warland and uh, anyway learned a lot from Barry about gilding. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna quit there, let that all dry. I got a little mess here to clean up, so. All right, now my second coat of gesso is drying on my piece, and I thought I would just uh, take this time to show you some of the uh, gilding supplies. Now, I've got two coats of gesso on my piece. So shellac, a couple coats of gesso, take some fine sandpaper and just take off the, uh, the rough bits on that, doesn't take much. All right, and this is a critical stage. If you're doing real gold leaf or silver leaf, uh, this takes a long time. There's many steps to this process. And I'm just kind of showing you the highlights or the easy way to do it. Okay, we are getting closer. And what I have here, shake this up a little bit. This is a Dux, D-U-X, quick dry gilding size. Right there. And the sizing is simply uh, like a glue or an adhesive. All right, now. I got a good can of this. It's uh, relatively new and it's not skinned over or anything. So I'm going to take a little artist brush and I get these. They're cheap and 
I do clean them out a little bit when I when I can right there. So I'm going to put this uh, sizing over the gesso and I'm, I'm going to try real hard to do a do a neat job. I see some of my bristles are coming off get way back in this corner back here. This um, sizing really is a little bit like contact cement. I mean, <laughs> you know, I've I've put more formica down than gold leaf or, or maybe even veneer back in the day. So I'm going to cover that surface and then I may speed this up, but you get the idea. There's there's different ways to apply this sizing. You can spray it on, brush it on, like I'm doing here. All right, one more little area up in here. So I'll let this dry to the point where it's a little tacky. You know, just kind of like contact cement. And then I'll be ready to do my leafing. All right. This will take 20 minutes or, or so to dry. All right. All right, I am ready for the next step, the fun part of this. And what I need are a couple little brushes to pat down my silver leaf. This is real silver leaf. And contact cement, um, it's not coming off on my finger, but it's still pretty tacky. Yeah. Now, this this silver leaf, and this is made by or sold by Barnabas, right there. And I don't know where I got that, probably off the internet someplace. And it's fairly expensive. So what I've got here, I've got uh, a little pack of silver leaf. And it looks to me like these are transfer. They're on the back of this uh, wax paper, which makes it a lot easier to apply this. Ordinarily, if I have loose leaf of some sort, I would use this little, uh, looks like a brush, but it's a gilder's tip. And you can sort of pick that gold leaf up or silver leaf and put it on where you want it. But I don't think I'm gonna need that. Let me get one of these sheets out here. There it is. All right, I backed the camera off just a little bit so you could see what I was doing here. Sometimes you can have the camera too close. Anyway, um, this is the side I want right here. The other side is the upside. All right, let's just put this on here. And like contact cement, this should just grab onto that, that silver leaf. And I'm going to take a, one of my brushes Oop, and we came off. All right, I like that. that. That turned out pretty good. And if you have any bare spots, you can just kind of fold that over. I'm going to take another full sheet, make sure I'm overlapping. Take my brush and just tamp that down. Now this is real silver leaf, so when I'm done, I'll collect the, uh, the leftover bits, put those in a baggie. Right there, oh, I like it, turned out pretty good. And I've got a little bit, little bit here. And there's a little bit that you need to touch up as you go along here. All right. That looks pretty good. Pretty good for an amateur. Now I got one more section over here. Let me grab some more of this. And I'm just lightly pressing that down with my finger to begin with so it, it starts to grab. Take that off. Got a little, a little section down here. I think I've got enough right there. 
There we go. Now, one reason I am using silver leaf is because the center here is silver. It's silver uh, gilt cream. And I may touch that up to make that a little bit brighter so it matches the uh, silver leaf I'm putting on there. Okay, I've got one more, more little area down here. I'm going to work on there. Right there. All right, now I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to tamp this down with my brush. I'm going to make sure that uh, sizing grabs onto my silver leaf. Here I am at my bandsaw, and I'm going to take off the waste block. I've got a large uh, resaw fence uh, set up, and I'm going to just run this through there. I do have a push stick in my left hand, so uh, safety first all the time. And this does a really nice job. I got a flat section on the lower part of this display piece that uh, sits on the bandsaw table. And now I'm going to reverse chuck this. I've got a waste block that fits that uh, center section, which is on the true center of the piece. I'm going to bring up my tail center, which actually has a mandrel saver uh, in the live center. Bring that up, lock it in, and there's actually a, a hole just slightly on center that was drilled before for the waste block, so I just uh, put that in there. Now, I'm uh, going back and forth to some uh, draw cuts and some push cuts. This is like turning a really, really shallow bowl. And right here I'm going really into end grain, but it's an easier cut to make even though the surface is not very good at this point. Doesn't matter. So I'm taking off a lot of the weight for this piece. Uh, it's probably an inch and a half thick, and I'm trying to just lighten the load here a little bit. And I'm approaching that uh, off-center area right there. We'll turn the lathe off and you can kind of see, and I'm going to stop right there. That's a good place uh, to stop that. I'm putting a couple little details in here with a square end scraper. I'm getting some nice shavings from this indicating uh, more of a cut. I probably have a, a pretty good burr on this tool. So I just continue towards the center. I'll get back to my bowl gouge here in a second. And I'm having a little bit of slippage there, as you might you might see, so that doesn't really matter. Got this between centers on a drive block, and I'm going to just take this away. And in a second, I'm going to uh, turn the lathe off and turn my cameras off, and uh, I'm going to get to this point. I do a lot of work off camera just to, to get to this point and taking a lot of that wood off, and I'm happy with that. It's... It's a lot lighter than it used to be. So I have a little bit of texturing there. I'm going to take my little torch, highlight that, and that's a good way to do that. I think uh, coloring that would not be the way to go. I'll speed this up just a little bit. Now keep in mind this is the underside or the backside of my piece, and I'll probably put a little clip on this so somebody can hang that from the wall. I've also done a little bit more texturing on this and I'm going to put some color in this um, in a second. There it is right there and I am going to take that away. I don't like it at all looking at it even though I put some of my clear acrylic lacquer on this. Yeah, I don't like that at all, so uh, we'll remove that, and I'll show you some finished pieces later on. And I don't know, you can barely see this in the in the camera shot. Uh, I'm, I'm putting a little bit more of that finish on the very rim of the outside of this piece. So let's move on to the next uh, section. 
I've got a lot of videos dealing with gilding and most of them most of them are metal leaf not gold leaf or silver leaf um, one indicator if it's a genuine gold or just simply a metal leaf this is silver obviously and it's on a transfer which is real easy to do it's kind of stuck to a piece of wax paper there these bigger sheets are always metal leaf they're imitation silver or gold and i've got a a bunch of these right here um, my favorite one of my favorite ways to apply uh, gilding is in a, a flake okay it's and that's what it looks like it's messy but it's cheap and easy and fun and you always get a good result um, this little baggie is all full of those flakes you just uh, prepare your surface put some sizing on it the sizing is the adhesive these are pure gold leaf okay they're very small little pieces 100 gold leaf sheets in that little packet I get a lot of these from Hobby Lobby now these smaller containers these smaller sections of leaf are real gold leaf or real silver leaf these are silver this one is gold leaf whoops <laughs> this one's gold leaf okay in that little container there little envelope if you will so I'm gonna put this stuff back in there some more of that flake which uh, it's pretty cool fun to do this is all fun to do um, there's some more imitation gold not real but it's a lot cheaper to mess up with that stuff than than the real gold or silver so